Imagine a world where dragonflies are the size of crows, millipedes stretch longer than a human, and sharks sport scissors for jaws. Welcome to Earth 300 million years ago, where nightmares roamed and oxygen fueled giants. The Carboniferous period, spanning from 358.9 to 298.9 million years ago, was a time of extraordinary biological and geological change. Earth's landscape was dominated by vast, swampy rainforests, teeming with life forms unlike anything we see today. The atmosphere contained significantly higher levels of oxygen, up to 35% compared to our current 21%, creating conditions that allowed for the evolution of creatures of immense proportions, particularly arthropods. In these primordial forests, one of the most striking inhabitants was Meganeura, a giant dragonfly that dwarfed its modern counterparts. With a wingspan reaching up to 65 centimeters, Meganeura was roughly the size of a modern crow. These massive insects were apex predators of the skies, their enormous compound eyes giving them excellent vision to spot prey. Meganeura's flight capabilities were likely superior to modern dragonflies thanks to their larger size and the oxygen-rich atmosphere that supported their high-energy lifestyle. Fossilized remains indicate that Meganeura had powerful mandibles capable of crushing the exoskeletons of other insects and even small amphibians. Their elongated abdomens provided stability during flight, while their forewings could operate independently, allowing for incredible maneuverability. This combination of size, speed, and predatory adaptations made Meganeura one of the most formidable aerial hunters of its time. While Meganeura ruled the air, the forest floor was home to an equally impressive arthropod, Arthropleura. This massive millipede-like creature could grow up to 2.6 meters in length, making it the largest known land invertebrate of all time. Despite its intimidating size, Arthropleura was likely a gentle giant. Evidence suggests it was primarily herbivorous, feeding on the abundant plant matter in its swampy habitat. Arthropleura's body was composed of around 30 articulated segments, each protected by two side plates and a central plate. This armored exoskeleton provided defense against predators, while its numerous legs allowed it to navigate through the dense undergrowth of carboniferous forests. Trace fossils indicate that Arthropleura may have burrowed, possibly as a means of thermoregulation or to escape larger predators. The waterways of the Carboniferous period were no less perilous than the land and air. One of the most fearsome aquatic predators was Orthocanthus, a freshwater shark that could grow up to three meters in length. What set Orthocanthus apart from modern sharks was its bizarre dentition. Its jaws were lined with double-pronged teeth, creating a gnashing trap that could slice through prey with brutal efficiency. Orthocanthus was an opportunistic predator, feeding on fish, amphibians, and even its own kind. Fossil evidence suggests cannibalistic behavior, with smaller Orthocanthus often falling prey to larger individuals. This shark's elongated body and eel-like tail fin allowed it to navigate the swampy waters of its habitat with ease, making it a highly successful predator in the Carboniferous ecosystems. Another peculiar shark of this era was Stethacanthus, notable for the anvil-shaped protrusion on its back. This structure, composed of enlarged scales and fin rays, formed a flat-topped crest on the shark's head and back. The purpose of this unique anatomy has been the subject of much scientific debate. Some theories suggest it may have been used for mating displays, while others propose it served as camouflage, allowing the shark to blend in with the rocky seafloor when viewed from above. Stethacanthus grew to about 70 centimeters in length, making it considerably smaller than Orthocanthus. Despite its size, it was likely an effective predator, using its unusual dorsal structure potentially to corral or stun prey. The presence of such specialized features in Carboniferous sharks highlights the diversity and evolutionary experimentation occurring in marine ecosystems during this period. On land, one of the most terrifying creatures was Pulmonoscorpius kirktonensis, a scorpion that grew up to 70 centimeters in length. This massive arachnid was more than 10 times the size of most modern scorpions. Its large pincers and powerful stinger would have made it a formidable predator in the Carboniferous landscape. While the exact potency of Pulmonoscorpius's venom is unknown, it was likely a highly effective weapon against the other arthropods and small vertebrates of its time. The scorpion's size suggests it may have been capable of preying on early tetrapods, 
the ancestors of modern amphibians, reptiles, and mammals. Fossilized remains indicate that Pulmonoscorpius had well-developed eyes, implying it was an active hunter rather than an ambush predator. Another intriguing arthropod of the Carboniferous was Megarachne, initially thought to be a giant spider. Further analysis revealed it to be a member of the Eurypterid group, more closely related to modern horseshoe crabs. Megarachne could reach sizes of up to 54 centimeters, making it one of the largest Eurypterids known. Megarachne likely inhabited freshwater environments, using its large, paddle-like appendages to swim and capture prey. Its diet probably consisted of fish and other aquatic organisms. The initial misclassification of Megarachne as a spider highlights the challenges paleontologists face when reconstructing ancient ecosystems from fragmentary fossil remains. Among the most enigmatic creatures of the Carboniferous was the Tully monster. This bizarre animal, known only from fossils found in the Maison Creek fossil beds of Illinois, has puzzled scientists since its discovery in the 1950s. The Tully monster had a long segmented body with a proboscis-like appendage at one end and a tail fin at the other. Perhaps its most striking feature was a pair of stalked eyes positioned midway along its body. The classification of the Tully monster has been a subject of intense scientific debate. Initially thought to be a worm-like creature, subsequent studies have suggested affiliations with mollusks, arthropods, and even vertebrates. Recent research using advanced imaging techniques has provided evidence that the Tully monster may have been a basal vertebrate, possibly related to lampreys. However, its exact place in the tree of life remains uncertain, making it one of the most mysterious creatures of the Carboniferous. Another perplexing denizen of Carboniferous seas was Edestus, a shark genus characterized by its scissor teeth. Unlike modern sharks that shed and replace individual teeth, Edestus retained multiple generations of teeth, which grew in a curved arrangement resembling pinking shears. This unique dentition has led to much speculation about Edestus's feeding behavior. One theory suggests that Edestus used its tooth whirls to slash into soft-bodied prey, such as squid or fish. Another hypothesis proposes that the shark may have used its teeth to scissor through tougher-skinned animals. The unusual nature of Edestus's teeth has made it challenging for paleontologists to determine its exact feeding mechanism, and it remains one of the most puzzling predators of the Carboniferous period. The prevalence of giant arthropods and other large creatures during the Carboniferous can be attributed to several factors. The high oxygen levels in the atmosphere allowed for more efficient respiration, enabling arthropods to grow to sizes that would be physiologically impossible today. Additionally, the lack of large terrestrial vertebrate predators during the early Carboniferous provided an evolutionary opportunity for arthropods to dominate various ecological niches. The end of the Carboniferous saw significant changes in global climate and geography. The formation of the supercontinent Pangaea led to a drier climate and a reduction in the swampy forests that had characterized much of the period. These changes, coupled with a decrease in atmospheric oxygen levels, likely contributed to the decline of many of the giant arthropods and other unique creatures that had thrived during this time. The Carboniferous period is an indication of the dramatic ways in which life can evolve under different environmental conditions. The creatures that inhabited Earth during this time were not only larger than their modern counterparts, but often possessed bizarre adaptations that have no parallel in today's world. From giant dragonflies patrolling the skies, to massive millipedes crawling through swampy forests, and from freshwater sharks with double-pronged teeth to enigmatic monsters that continue to puzzle scientists, the Carboniferous was truly a time of biological marvels. The study of these ancient ecosystems provides valuable insights into the processes of evolution and the impact of environmental changes on life forms. The history of life on Earth is filled with incredible diversity, much of which has been lost to time. As we continue to discover fossils and develop new techniques for analyzing them, our understanding of the Carboniferous and other prehistoric periods continues to grow, disclosing an ever more complex and fascinating picture of Earth's past. As we reflect on the terrifying and awe-inspiring creatures of the Carboniferous, we are left with a sense of wonder at the incredible diversity of life that has existed on our planet. From the monstrous insects that once ruled the skies to the bizarre sharks that prowled ancient seas, each creature tells a story of adaptation, survival, and ultimately transformation. The Carboniferous period stands as a critical chapter in Earth's history, offering a glimpse into a world both familiar and alien, and reminding us of the ever-changing nature of life on our planet.